I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hi everyone, you're watching the Wrestle Rock Podcast Season 4. I'm Johnny D, your humble uh, host, and I am with my partner, Benoit, aka Nostradamus. Ben, how's you going today, my friend? Finally. <laughs> yes, I'm going super great, super great. And tonight, another, ladies and gentlemen, another ECW. Yes, we have another ECW challenge. ECW, uh, ECW, ECW. Live ECW. from Vietnam. I'm talking about Chili Willy. Yes, How sir. You, my friend today. Hello, 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 guys. Uh, thank you guys for having me on, man. You're welcome. Ah, that that's super cool that you accept uh, our invitation. Honestly, I yes. know that you are. Uh, not at the door, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, you are in uh, Vietnam right now. So, yes, uh, uh, that, that's probably very different than the United States, if you know what I mean. That's yeah. probably a big uh, culture shock. Uh, when you <laughs> there, probably, you know. Yeah, well, well, so it's um, um, it's 12 o'clock p.m. Well, 12 o'clock a.m. Okay. actually okay. Uh, here. <laughs> So, uh, you know, we were like 12 hours um, ahead of you guys. Wow. So uh, it's already, uh, what, uh, Wednesday morning at 8, uh, February, uh, February, November 8th? Yeah. Uh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So I'm in, De I'm in, I'm actually in Da Nang, Da Nang, Vietnam. So okay. that's like the middle of uh, Ho Chi Minh, Da okay. Nang, and then you got, and then you got uh, Hanoi, north. So I'm in the middle. I'm in the beach. I'm in the beach area. Nice. Go well with the can, I say, can I say uh, good morning, Vietnam? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's okay. that, that should that should have been your intro for this one. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, Mr. Chili Willy, uh, can you tell us about your childhood in Goldsboro, North Carolina? Ah, uh, yeah, man. I grew up. Um, Actually, I was born in Goldsboro. I was raised in a okay. small town called Fremont, maybe like 12 miles outside of Goldsboro. And um, uh, I was only there for like nine months of my, you know, being, you know, being a baby. And, and then I was uh, brought up to New Jersey by my grandmother. And so okay. uh, my mom had to finish. So uh, I was raised in East Orange, New Jersey uh, until I was about. And then I went back to North Carolina. Uh, so I was back and forth between New Jersey and North Carolina. Okay. So, um, you know, I got the best of both worlds, the, the, the country part and the city part. And, uh, yeah, that's how I grew up, you know, grew up uh, mostly in, in Jersey. And, and then I would come down and, you know, hang out in the, in the country, you know, work, in, work on the farms and, you know, wow. put in tobacco, pick cucumbers and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice and your uh, if my memory is good you started your wrestling career around uh 1997 or yes nine, nine, yep 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 exactly so yeah here, i uh cw anderson and mm -hmm. larry sharp of course no uh, no no not not larry sharp i mean let me let me let me back it up what happened was um i always wanted to be a wrestler since i was Okay. seven eight years old and so okay. I, I got married in in 89 and 90 and so in 90 i i was living in rochester new york okay and so i wanted to try out for wrestling and i went down to paulsboro new jersey and i tried out at larry sharp monster factory i just tried out one night it was on a tuesday night wow. i drove from rochester all the way down that's what the and, I drove, okay. and, and then i then i drove all the way back home because i was you know just got married i was working so i was like 19 20 years old and so i, I just tried out that one time and um 
you know, I didn't have any uh, money for it. You know, it was three thousand, four thousand dollars to go to school. Mm-hmm. So I just that was like I said, nineteen ninety. So it took me another what seven years, you know, before I really got into six exactly. years before I got into the to okay. the restaurant. What happened was I tried out for WCW, WCW Power Plant in '96 because I was nice. working in yeah I was working in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, at Foot Locker, and then uh, I went to Atlanta. I had some friends living in Atlanta, and uh, I told them I want to go try out for the WCW Power Plant. I did that for three days, made the cut. But then again, I still didn't have any money. So I came back and I came back, stayed with my mom and dad in North Carolina. My dad was a, a janitor at, at the uh, at the high school that I went. So I could get in, you know, in the back doors if there are certain games, certain activities I didn't have to pay. So there was a wrestling, a wrestling show going on in my school. At, on, it was on May 10th. And uh, it was guys like, uh, Steve Carino, Joey Matthew, Christine York, uh, Lodi, the Hardy Boys, you know, all these guys before they made it big, they were at my school. And uh, mm-hmm. and so C.W. Anderson was there, but his cousin was the DJ. And his okay. name was Dan. Yeah, his cousin was the DJ. His name was Dan Wright. I call him Buddha. He's still he's still around and he's still doing his thing in, in Selma, North Carolina. They actually <laughs> have a school called the, the Factory. The factory no, the factor, factory, I can't say the word right in, It's in North Carolina. And so um, I went over and I said, bro, I said, how can I, uh, you know, get into this wrestling thing? He gave me his number. And mm-hmm. at that time, W. Anderson was was the trainer. And so it was just me, like okay. two other guys, you know, we went and, um, yeah, that was that was it in Killing North Carolina. We started training. A guy named Laz, he did some work for, for TNA. Um, and then there was another guy named Stacy. It was just the three of us. And uh, CW trained us until he went to ECW. When he went to ECW, then we got picked up by another guy. His name mm-hmm. was Jack Simone out of Mount Airy, North Carolina. So, yeah, I didn't know when that's how it started. Nice. And we receive uh, Chris uh, during that, uh, our season two. Season two, yeah, yes. with Jazz. Oh, yeah? Yes. Wow. We, we say hi to Chris. Yeah, hi to Chris <laughs> yes. and Jazz. Okay, uh, I read I read somewhere that you competed as a tough man, uh, which means what? Yeah, I and, and so what happened was when I was a, when I was wrestling, I did that for like we started. I started wrestling ninety seven, ninety eight. So you know, back then, um, I wasn't really doing it full time. Like you know, when I had a shoot job, I had a real job at the factory, <laughs> and so. Uh, but when, on the weekends when I wasn't wrestling, when I wasn't booked in North Carolina, mm-hmm. if and when the tough men came around, um, I tried out for it. And I remember watching my car and I saw a sign that said, tough man, win $1,500. I thought it was, you know, I was going to win the whole $1,500, but actually it was a three weight classes. <laughs> so each, each class got $500. If you won that that that, that class, so a bit, so every day, you know, I, I mean, I was I was the heavyweight. I was two hundred fifty pounds, two hundred forty five pounds. So I was in the heavyweight division, and so uh, the first one, I, I did it in Goldsboro, North Carolina. It was uh, at the YMCA, and okay. man, I won. And then I, I I was liking it. I was like, whoa, this is all right. It was only you know three rounds, one minute rounds, but man, you get in there, you gas out. You know, it's not like wrestling where you know you can. You can sit down for a little bit and you catch your breath. That was just, you know, just boom, 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 nonstop. And so uh, I won the first one. And then the next time they came around with, with like another year, or I, I tried out again. And, you know, it's just quick money for me to do it. So I did. I think I did like four or five of them. <laughs> and I imagine that um, C.W. Anderson helps you for being part of the ECW. So my question is really simple. So how did you get recruited by the ECW? Yeah, that was, um, I was wrestling um, uh, on, the, on the North Carolina circuit. It was called SCW. Um, okay. Now now it's called Gouge Wrestling. You can look that up. Um, okay, okay. But there's a guy named, he's a promoter named Greg Grog. And so uh, 
you know, he just dressed up as the, the, the you know, like his, his character was like dressing up as Count Dracula, but he was the promoter. And he, he, would, he would get guys in like, like, uh, oh man, I'm gonna go back way back. Rick Link, you know, legends like that. Manny Fernandez, the Hardy Boys, Shane Helms, wow. C.W. Anderson, you know, Dak Hardwood, you know, it was Casey McKnight before, you know, he would, he would have all those guys in there. Okay. And so um, I started working for him and then uh, did a show in, in one of the towns and CW was also, he was already in um, ECW. So him and Steve Carino came out and they saw okay. the show. So it was the both of them. So they invited me up and uh, I hung out with them for the weekend and went to a couple of shows in uh, ECW and got booked, you know, did, did a, did a, uh, a dark match with Julio De Niro and, uh, Tommy Dreamer said, "Hey, you know, it, 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 you know, you can join us, it, but but on the flip side of that, some of the guys on the ball, these like like Angel and Tony DeVito, them guys, they wanted to get off the ring crew, and so they okay. they saw they saw they saw a little fresh guy, you know, green guy coming in. They said, oh, okay, he, we put him on the ring crew, so they put me on the ring crew, and they said, <laughs> look, Tom, this is what Tommy Dreamer said: you can you can you can do the link, the ring crew, and you can wrestle." And so that's how I started. Oh, that's awesome when can when you can do both. So uh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, yes. Okay, you wrestled uh, at, at the end of the original SW 2000, 2001, if I remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, you uh, you wrestled many many uh, good matches. My question is: uh, Would you consider Johnny Swinger to be your greatest ECW opponent? Or nah. rival? Uh, well, he was definitely one of my biggest names, you know, because he came from WCW. But you know, right there, right there in ECW, you know, Rhino was probably one of my um, you know bigger names that I wrestled. Also, you know, I, I had matches with him, Tony Mamaluke, um, yeah. you know, yeah. guys like that. You know, Guido, Guido, you know, uh, yeah, Red the Red Dog. You know, Green. Red Dog, yeah, you know, yeah, Red Dog, man. uh huh, yeah. So, so, um, and even the Baldies, like I said, you know, Angel and DeVito and those guys, yeah. guys on my team that were balls and stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it, everyone it, it, to me, it was, everyone was um, a big match to me, you know what I mean? So, uh, I had a good time with everyone. Um, actually, when they brought in Johnny Swinger, um, like I said, he came from WCW, and I was surprised that they let me go over on him, you know what I mean? Because I thought, you know, hey, but I was already in ECW a little bit longer than him, you know, maybe a couple of months longer than him. And so they brought him in. And then, uh, you know, I just went over a couple of matches and then they put him with, you know, Simon Diamond and stuff like that. So. And um, at the end, uh, at the beginning of uh, 2000, if my memory is good, 2001, 2001, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Importantly, WWE About. did the acquisition of ECW. So, how did you react to the WWE's acquisition of ECW? You mean like the one night stand thing or whatever they had? Um, I think I was in the military when that happened. Is that what you're really? saying? Yeah, yeah. I, because I, I went in the military in 2001, October 2001. Okay. So, but I didn't see all that or experience none of that, you know. Um, I, I didn't hear about it until after I came back, you know, came back from Iraq. But, you know, from what I saw, you know, it was – they had already bought into it, I guess. And, you know, I think at that time it was already sold to to, to WWE. So, you know, Vince and the, and the, and the big boys are going to – they're going to they're gonna put their spin on it, you know what I mean? So yeah. – Yeah. What can you do? What can you do with a freight train like that? You know, <laughs> you can't do nothing. You can't it stop. It is what it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, the ECW spirit changed forever. So, mm. and when we discussed with a lot of ECW talent, uh, we learned a lot of things as ECW talent was a family. And when WWE did the acquisition was very uh, after different. that that was very different forever so, yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah and, you know it's um, crazy and after that uh you wrestled at uh, the philippine wrestling revolution right pwr 
Yes. Uh, what I, well, I, I, I didn't actually, I, I, I didn't actually wrestle. I tried one. I did one match, but I got hurt. But anyway, okay, you did. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I went. I uh, pretty much consulted with the with the with the guys and, and, and the girls here that you oh. know here Southeast Asia. Um, they're they're pretty much homegrown when it comes to you know doing their wrestling. They they pretty much was taught by themselves, and you know uh, I think a couple of people came in uh, to help them out a little bit. But they they pretty much did their you know own thing. They learned on the fly, and so I just went in there and just gave them a couple of pointers here and there. I'm still I'm still connected with them in some small way, uh, but it's not PWR. It's NWF now. Uh, they changed brands or something like that, so they split off. You know, um, you know, you know, wrestling promoters are they, they split off and all that. So anyway, uh, but yeah, they're, I mean, great bunch of uh, young, good talent, you know, here in, in Southeast Asia, you know, here in, in uh, you know, in, in Vietnam also, they have some good stuff. I want to go check them out in Ho Chi Minh, but I haven't done it yet. But the Philippines, man, they're they're really uh, they're progressing. You know, Tajiri came in. Um, they brought in guys like Jeff Cobb, uh, I think. Uh, TJP, you know, things like that. So their name is, you know, it's getting out there, it, 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 you know, the Philippine wrestling scene. So they're doing really, really well. Okay. Uh, today uh, you live in uh, Vietnam. Uh, no, I live in Philippines. Philippines. Are you, are you US yeah. in the Philippines? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, why did you decide to move there? Ah, oh, man. <laughs> Woo, good. You know, oh. I, I, <laughs> I was watching uh, I was watching TV one day with my little uh, I call my granddaughter uh, and so we were I was watching TV and I was watching a Food Network the the TLC channel whatever and the Food Network came on Anthony Bourdain and things like that and so he was in the Philippines and he was trying different foods and and then they were talking about they had a military base here back in the 80s which I didn't know it about you know the Air Force base. And so all and that that clicked when that when I heard that they had an Air Force base in the Philippines, I'm thinking because I'm a veteran, I'm thinking, ah, oh. you know, I made the connection. So I said, maybe I can go to the Philippines and live and get all my health needs taken care of, you know, because I got some issues, you know what I mean? From the war, poor eating, you know, drinking beer, you know, but uh, <laughs> so so instead of getting taken care of in America, and plus it's cheaper. You know what I mean? So I, I just yeah. said I wanted to go there and, you know, try it. I've been there for eight years, you know. But this is my first time here in Vietnam. And uh, I've been here a week now. And so uh, I'm really liking it. So I don't know if I'm going to make the transition of moving here to Vietnam. <laughs> oh, nice. And uh, when did you last appear at uh, an indie, uh, indie show, either as a wrestler or as a guest? Oh, this, mm, I think two, I was back in America 2001? 2001. 2001. Yeah, I think 2001. And that was in Selma, Selma, North Carolina. And uh, okay. uh, I, I visit, you know, yes. back in the I days. Yeah. yeah. You live. Uh, I'm sorry, 2000, 2021, not 2001. 2021. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 2021. <laughs> awesome. And uh, we are at pr practically at 20 of your generous minute. So um, for closing our uh, <laughs> episode, uh, as usual, my partner Benoit, a.k.a. Um, Nostradamus Ben, it's all about the okay. French problem, you know, and he tried to predict the future of our guests. Go on, my friend. Okay. First of all, Mr. Uh, Willy, uh, thank you so much for the interview. Uh, very, very appreciated. You're okay, welcome. my prediction. Thank you oh, you're welcome too. <laughs> my prediction is uh, for for one show, you you uh, you will be you will be back in USA for a, a show of uh, ECW's reunion, a little bit like ECW One Night Stand, but not owned by WWE. Will I? I don't know. <laughs> Like a battleground or stuff like that with uh, oh no 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 well actually I haven't, I haven't been in I haven't been in no uh no 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 shows like that or um no conventions or anything like that yeah I uh, usually usually when I come home like last year I came home I had to get my eyes done I had to get a cataract surgery okay. on both oh. my eyes 
So, okay. so I, 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 I went home, stay home for like two months, two or three months. And then I went right back to the Philippines uh, because I didn't have time to, you know, enjoy and, and, and all that. Um, so next time, I think 2024, I'm going to go home. I was supposed to go home for Christmas. But I came here to Vietnam. I don't think I'm going home. Okay. I hope my mom Maybe <laughs> Not as a wrestler, necessarily, but maybe it would be as I guess. Right. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would love to. You know, if, if if someone you know invited me, sure, no, well, why not? I would love to. I would love to uh, go to some conventions and, and things. Some people have already asked me, but I'm just, it's just that I'm here. You know, I'm over here in Southeast Asia, so it's kind of hard to um, do a show or whatever. No one's going to fly me out. For that amount yeah. of money, you know, you know, I, I wouldn't even want them to, you know, I'm not that, you know, if I'm in America and then they have a show and then they invite me, yes, I will go, you know, but I'm not going to have someone fly me out, you know, of course, unless yeah. it's WWE, but, you yeah. know, it's a, it's a lot, you know, so yeah, I would love to. If you are in the United States, you don't say no, but you don't want to travel uh, 13 hours or maybe 20 <laughs> Oh, more, like, more, more, more like 33 hours. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Yeah. Just for Ooh. a simple appearance. Wow, that's very good. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of crazy, you know what I mean? So if I if I'm gonna go, like I said, if I'm gonna go to America and stay yeah. two or three months, and someone is having a convention, you know, reunion or whatever, and then they ask me, yeah, I, I would definitely go. So thank you so much for the interview. Uh, that was very funny, and we learned a lot of stuff about you and the ECW uh, period and stuff like that. So thank you guys. Uh, we are very grateful that you can uh, accept our invitation for uh, 22 generous minutes. <laughs> yes, so it was Chili Willy, former ECW uh, wrestling challenge. Uh, I'm your host, Jonathan. And I'm with my partner, Benoit. Okay, in Australia, man. <laughs> so, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.